North Carolina's first verbal commit in the class of 2023 is something of a unicorn. My friends, Gigi Jackson is getting all the love, but don't you dare sleep on my man Simeon Wilcher. This dude is going to be a phenomenal Tar Heel, and I can't wait for you to experience it. The Carolina Coach K and I, we're going to unpack every bit of it about Mr. Wilcher on today's episode of Locked on Tar Heels. You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's Wednesday, May 11th, 2022. Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast. As always, I'm your host, Isaac Shade, beat writer for North Carolina's All Tar Heels website on the Sports Illustrated Network. I want to thank you so much for joining us. As always, please don't forget that we are free and available anywhere you get your podcasts. Thanks for making it your first watch or your first listen today, just like every other day. And joining me, as he has for the last several weeks in a row now, is the Carolina Coach K, my man, Pat Kilby. Coach K, how is it going? Great to have you. Where on earth are you? For those that are uh, that are listening and, and not watching, Coach K is not at home. Where are you at today, brother? Well, first of all, it's great to be on here. Love joining you on the podcast. And I'm coming to you from a different location today. I'm coming to you from the home of Brady Manick, the Panther Dome. And uh, I'm sitting here right now at half court. We've got the goal and uh, the, the playoff success behind us here that Brady Manick was a large part of. So I figured I'd give Tar Heel Nation a little taste of uh, Brady Manick and where he's from. I love it. Thank you for bringing us in. So for those of you that are listening, let me encourage you to go check out the YouTube video of, of this just so you can see see the background here where Coach K is. Hera High School right there going on. And so that's awesome. Thank you uh, for bringing us into that. It's great to get to see it today. Coach K, that's fantastic. And so as we said, uh, what we're going to be doing is as, as we get into the summer, we want to start uh, evaluating some of Carolina's players individually, and so we'll just take them one week at a time. But before we get into the current roster, we're going to take today to talk about Simeon Wilcher, and then next week we're going to talk about Gigi Jackson, the two commits that Carolina currently have in the class of 2023. And so um, before we get into the the specifics of Wilcher's game and everything he does, just want to make sure we all know who he is, kind of his his stats, his data, his background. And so, Coach Kate, why don't you get us going on that, and then I'll hop in and join you as we go. Yeah. So Simeon, he's uh, you know, he's kind of like you said, he's a unicorn, and uh, kind of his background. He he grew up in New Jersey. He's coming out of Roselle Catholic High School, uh, 6'4", 185 pounds. <laughs> he's got and and not only for like a guard, you know, he's six four, but He's got great length. I mean, he's he looks like a six 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 seven kid with his length. He does, yeah. And so that's awesome. I mean, that that provides yeah. a lot of versatility. And uh, he plays for the New York Renaissance with his AAU team, which is a is a well renowned AAU team. And he's getting good coaching there and good playing top notch competition there. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's super super exciting to kind of break his game down for Tar Heel Nation today. Yeah, I, I'm with you uh, on what you're saying about how he just looks bigger and longer than his height in uh, w- watching highlights of him. I, I've not had the opportunity to see him in person myself, but he really does seem to play uh, bigger than his height. And so, mm-hmm. um, man, that's fun. So when we start to look at some of the numbers and the rankings, um, he is a five-star player. Um, and so, you, I mean, it ultimately stars. What are they? But just, you know, stars nothing. But... Uh, you'd rather have them than not have them, <laughs> right? Absolutely. So, so we we look at these rankings. Currently, he's uh, uh, tenth at ESPN, tenth at Rivals. He's nineteenth at two forty seven Sports like individual rankings, and then two forty seven also does a composite where they bring together a bunch of the different rankings, and he's thirteenth overall in that. So, so we're talking a consensus top twenty guy, regardless of what recruiting service you look at, and. Um, what, what does that tell you, Coach K, as you look at a guy coming in, um, you know, you're around these high school athletes all the time. And I think we so often think, oh man, he's not top 10 or he's not top five, but goodness gracious, there are hundreds, if not thousands of these young men and women on the, on the women's side going to schools all over the country. So to get a top 20 guy, what kind of a big deal is that? Well, it's a huge deal. And 
I mean, I, the first thing we need to do is to just basically admire Coach Davis and his staff. <laughs> From the moment Coach Davis got the job, he didn't make any bones about it. He said he wanted to get top talent. And he said, you know, not only did he want them to be top talent, he wanted them to be guys that wanted to be at the University of North Carolina. Yes, that's right. And Simeon fits that perfectly. Um, he doesn't, you know, he's a five star in his skill, but he's kind of like a two star, three star in the fact that he carries a chip on his shoulder. He has some some dog in him or some fight in him, if you will. And so he he fits that mold of, yeah, he's a top talent, but he's got some heart and some passion and some grit. <laughs> And that fits Coach Davis, I mean, perfectly. It fits his personality and what he wants. And so it's really a credit and a testament to Coach Davis and his staff for going and getting those guys that fit the Carolina mold uh, because Man. it's that's not easy to do. It's really not because so many of these highly ranked guys are uh, – Pre, essentially prima donnas, right? Like they've they've been told they're special their whole life. Their booties have been pampered with special baby powder, whatever. It, you know, like and and so like I uh, there's a guy Patrick Baldwin Jr. that's in the transfer portal that might stay in the draft. It just seems like like I, I watched him last year at Milwaukee and it was awesome. He's playing for his dad, but it's like I don't see that 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 fight that dog in him that you're talking about, and, and I love that with Wiltshire. I think that's going to be a great part of what he brings to this team, that mentality. Yes. Well, and one other thing that I kind of wanted to mention is Coach Davis has a knack for bringing that out of players. You know, <laughs> at times this year, uh, Caleb Love in particular, he caught a lot of flack, like where's the heart, where's the grit, where's the toughness? Well, no one's questioning that anymore. <laughs> and I think that has a you know large large part to do with the fact that Coach Davis's personality is infectious and he was able to reach the team. And so – the fact that he's recruiting guys that are going to bring that from the get-go, I mean, how awesome is that? It's a great fit, and I just think it's think it's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's great. And and so often we think about these top 10, 20, 30 guys, um, rankings-wise, being almost certain one-and-dones. But in the in the NIL era, we're going to have to wait and see, right? We're, we've only got one one off season of it so far, and we're seeing some top talent coming back. Obviously, as normal, there's guys leaving, but I mean, we we have to think about the reality that somebody like this, that's a top twenty talent, could legitimately stay in Chapel Hill more than a year. That's exciting. Yes, absolutely. NIL changes that, and you know, North Carolina's kind of had a history of taking top players and keeping them around for a little while, like Harrison Barnes. I mean, yes, kid was the number one recruit coming out of high school. Everyone thought he was a one and done. He was going to the draft. Not so fast. I mean, he was around it. <laughs> People Not don't so want to leave Chapel Hill. So that's I, right. You know, and it's just a great place to play basketball. And NIL does nothing but help that because yeah, you can absolutely. you can make money while you're doing it. Yeah. So uh, just a couple more factoids about Mr. Simeon Wiltshire. He committed to Carolina back in October of last year, October 15th to be specific. Chose the Tar Heels over Yukon, Syracuse, Nebraska. It's kind of a, a random smattering, but when you think about where he's from in New Jersey, it makes sense. You got Syracuse up there, you got Yukon up there, and while Nebraska might seem curious, Coach K is going to tell us a little bit more about why that was a potential landing spot just a little bit later. Plug, tease, all that's coming up uh, soon. Also, if you want to follow Simeon on Twitter, you can do that. It's just his name, at Simeon Wiltshire. And I love his Instagram handle. You guys ready for this one? Dulla underscore swag 2004. So that's D-U-L-L-A underscore swag 2004. So go give him a follow on social media. Let him know how excited you are for him to come to Carolina. And so uh, we are going to continue now in just a second to dive more into Simeon's game, what he's actually going to bring strengths, weaknesses, because we definitely need to talk about that. But first, I need to tell you all a little bit about Built Bar. You know that summer is coming, and with summer, you need some on the go food options. And Built Bar is the perfect opportunity for you to do that. It's, it's a snack you can just throw in a bag, take it with you on a family trip. You know, like I just ate some sushi for supper tonight. I can't be taking that in the car, but Built Bars, you better believe they can go with you. And so make sure that everyone in your family has Built Bars for those on the go travels. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Built bars. Get swole. Coach K is writing on his dry erase board. Get I love swole. It. 
<laughs> Get swole. So all these built Bars, uh, they are covered in 100% real chocolate, and that means with built Bars, you can eat healthy and enjoy the taste too, both the bars and the built Puffs. And in fact, if you haven't tried these puffs, you need to. They're great and they come in crazy flavors like banana cream pie and churro. Everyone's trying to get some churro flavor built bars, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, and so, uh, if you don't just want that one flavor though, why not try one of the mixed boxes? It comes with 12 different items in it and that's great for you too. So, if you want to check this out, all you need to do is go to built.com. You're going to see some of the numbers. Just 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, only 4 net carbs, and yet 17 grams of protein. I know that's the kind of numbers Coach K wants for his basketball teams. They're at Hera High School right behind him, and so you do too. And you compare those numbers to a regular candy bar, you know which choice you need to make, folks. Come on and do the right thing. Built Bar has all these delicious flavors. New ones are coming out all the time. So make sure you go to built.com right now. Look to see what flavors they have that you might want. And while you're there, use promo code LOCKED15 and you're going to get 15% off your next order. Again, that's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Well, folks, I, I got to give you all a huge, huge shout out particularly those watching on YouTube. The, the audio numbers are growing like crazy, but the YouTube numbers, if you heard yesterday's show, you heard me say last week on uh, Locked on Tar Heels YouTube was the number one college show in the entire Locked on Network in terms of views. Uh, we were the only college channel that made it into the top 10 for the entire Locked on Network, not just the college uh, stations. And so, holy smokes, this is awesome. And it's not the time to just say, hey, nice job, pat on the back. It's time to keep it going. Let's keep growing this thing all off season long. That way, when we hit football season in the fall, we are ready to go. All right, that's enough of that talk. Coach K, let's get right back to talking about Simeon Wiltshire. And I just want to go straight in to hearing what he's got in his game already and some areas where he needs to grow. So start, if you would, by telling me some of the strengths that you see in him. Yeah, I think he's, you know, you use the term unicorn. I kind of was thinking like Swiss Army knife. I mean, he's Ooh, good. so, yeah. he's got so many different things into his game. And uh, the first thing that stands out, we kind of already talked about, he's versatile, uh, mm. especially defensively. And I know that's one thing as, you know, as fans of North Carolina basketball, we wanted to see improve was just the defensive side. Yeah. And he really brings that. He can guard one through three really well. He has great like lateral quickness and foot speed. I think he's got like maybe he may be the quickest kid in the class, and so wow. that's that's really encouraging to see that. I think he's got a very underrated skill in his vision. You know, if you watch mm -hmm. his highlights and you go watch him play and watch his games, he's great in the pick and roll. He's which is you know if you're Tarion Nation, you're thinking Gigi Jackson, Simeon Wiltshire pick and roll. Let's go. Yeah. And, uh, Come on. Exactly. Give me that. He, yes. He's so good at it. He has great vision. He collapses defense and he can spray the ball around. He's very unselfish. But at the same time, he's a shot creator because of his foot speed, his quickness, his ability to handle the ball. He's pretty good in the mid range. So he can pull up and, you know, stop on a dime and just explode up and go finish. And so he brings so much to the table. And for a guard, he's a good rebounder. He has hmm. so, so many. Uh, qualities that will fit directly into the style of basketball that North Carolina plays. And that's going to be really exciting to see. Yeah, I, I, so many great things in what you just said that just scream Hubert Davis to me. Yeah. Like, you talk about somebody that can guard multiple positions. I mean, that's ultimately why Kerwin Walton got left out of the rotation last year. He's not guarding at the level Coach Davis wants. And he said, you guard, you defend, you're on the court. Mm -hmm. uh, the the rebounding that he brings from that one or two position as a combo guard, uh, I mean, goodness gracious, that's Carolina written all over it. And the, the unselfishness, Carolina was at their best in the in the postseason when they were assistant. What was it in the the, the Marquette and Baylor games? Like eighty something percent of their shots were assisted. Uh, yes. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And so somebody like that with the vision. Um, it is something, you know, uh, RJ Davis has been uh, a better and more willing passer. Caleb struggles with that at times, but somebody that brings that talent in, you gotta love that and, and all that versatility. So I'm encouraged to hear 
all those strengths. What about the flip side of that, Pac? What What are some? Uh, obviously, he is not a fully developed player. He's he's great, but like anybody coming out of high school, he's going to have some holes in his game. What are they? Yeah, I think uh, at times, just from from the games that I've watched and from the highlights that I've seen, he struggles a little bit with shot selection and. Hmm. That is a tricky thing because you don't always know how that translates in college. A lot of times he's so good, he's taking a lot of the shots. And yeah. sometimes those are four shots and they're not the right shots. But he can get away with that because he is who he is at the high school level. Whereas when they get to college, they kind of have an understanding it can't be that way anymore. And so I say that's a weakness, but that could very easily change when he gets around higher level sure. competition. Yeah, Absolutely. And the other thing is, is I mentioned, you know, he's a Swiss Army knife. He has all these tools in his bag, and he's good at all of them, but he's not really great at any of them. Mm. And that, it's a weakness, but it's also really exciting because there's so much room for growth. And, he, yeah. you know, he has his senior year of high school, which is going to be a great developmental period. <laughs> And then he gets with Hubert Davis, who you guys have heard me say before, is, in my opinion, the best developer of talent in the country. And yeah. so there's so much room for growth with him. I think he's going to be a really, really good player. Yeah, that's such an interesting point, Pac, because, uh, you know, you, you talk about translatability to the NBA. And often it's what what is that one special thing? Like Cam Johnson is in the NBA right now because he is freaking huge and he can knock down threes at an elite level. And so that's something I, I'm really curious. That's a great point. Like being good at a lot of stuff is wonderful. But what is that thing you can do that really sets you apart that makes an NBA scout look at you and say, wow, I don't see that in any other player in this class or on my roster. I need that on my team. So I'm super mm -hmm. curious to see how he develops and what that is. Um, but you know, I guess at the end of the day, if you're a Swiss army knife and you can fill up a stat sheet, Hey, that's never a bad thing to be able to do. Yes. And I will say like, you know, when you talk about how his game translates to the NBA, he's set up really nicely because in the NBA, you know, they, they have to guard multiple positions. That's just the way it is with ball screens and the way the game's innovated and he can do that and he can do it at a high level, but also He's real, like I mentioned, he's really good in the pick and roll game, which is a large oh part of gosh. the offensive side of the game. One hundred percent. And so those things, you know, being, being a groundwork for his game and just being able to expound upon that as he gets older and as he grows and develops, he's set up nicely to make it to the NBA. He just needs to see those things improve a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And gosh, I, I didn't hit on it when you said it, but I mean, you think back to this past season. And uh, the the R.J. Davis Armando Baycott pick and roll connection, I mean, that's just I feel like that's going to be part of the Hubert Davis offense from now until Jesus comes back. Like, I mean, it's just <laughs> and man, when when you said Simeon Wilcher and um, and Gigi Jackson in that pick and roll game, or maybe Seth Tremble and Gigi Jackson in that, I mean, oh, that gets me excited, and that gets me like, oh my goodness, yes. Okay, so you're a coach, Pat Kildee. And often you're watching a lot of film, you're breaking stuff down, How, you know, like uh, I'm, I'm watching the Mavericks and Sun series right now and Luka Doncic is getting pick and like switched to death. Um, and just like every time they're trying to switch onto him and just let CP3 just exploit him. So mm -hmm. like what, you as a coach, you watch Simeon and what gets you like, Ooh, I want, I would want to exploit this if I'm uh, an opposing coach, if there is anything. Yeah, that's really tough because, like I said, he does everything pretty good. He's not really hmm. bad at anything. If there's anything, you know, that I would exploit, it wouldn't necessarily – you know, when you think of exploit, you think of how can we take advantage of him when he's on defense. Yeah. Um, but I kind of want to flip that around. I think, if anything, it might be an exploit to him if you give him a little bit of space and do your best to keep him in front because he's kind of like, you know, Caleb Love in, in a sense. He – he gets going when he gets downhill and he gets to the rim and he sees the ball go through the net a couple times and then shots start to fall. And so Simeon kind of gives me some of those vibes a little bit. Yeah. And I think maybe if you could contain him on the dribble, then hmm. maybe he would struggle to get his game going a little bit. But like I said, he's a really good player and that would be really tough to do because he is so quick and he is you know, very skilled and able to get downhill. But I think that that's where I would go with attacking his weakness a little bit. 
Yeah. That's a, and it's so interesting you bring up Caleb because when you talked about that shot selection, that's where I feel like I see the biggest hole in Caleb's game mm-hmm. is just still feeling that thing from high school of like, I have to be the guy when he forgets that, like, let me look around and realize that RJ Davis is over here. Brady Mannix over here. I can dump it to Baycott in the post, you know, like Mm -hmm. whatever that is. And hopefully he can make that transition more quickly than Caleb has is to realizing he has elite scoring everywhere around him to use that vision that you talked about and, and just find points for his team. Now as a combo guard, also at the same time, he's going to have, I would imagine he's not going to necessarily have the ball in his hands all the time. And so that'll be another factor in that. I would imagine his freshman year would probably be a senior RJ Davis uh, yes. leading the show. And so, oh my gosh, that's the other thing. You've got RJ Davis and, um, well, we'll get into that in just a minute. Man, I'm getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> it uh, is but exciting, I, though. Yeah, man, I'm just like, I'm going a mile a minute. So. Um, we're, we're going to talk more about all of that. And, and I'd love to hear coach K tell us a little bit about who, uh, as who, uh, from Tar Heel lore that, um, Simeon reminds him of and, and a current NBA player that Simeon reminds him of as well. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute, but first let me tell you some about rock auto with the ever increasing number of makes and models of cars. It's nearly impossible for your local auto parts store to stock everything that you need. And so why try to go through all those questions? You don't know the answers to like what, what's what kind of bulbs you need for your headlights, sir. I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. And so then you got to sit there and wait at the counter while they try to find it. And uh, instead, you could just sit at home, go to rockauto.com and find all these parts for yourself. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers just like you for over 20 years. That consistency is something that you can believe in. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer and their inventory has every single thing you could need. So go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. And while you're there, write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. That's rockauto.com. Okay, we are joined again today by Coach the Carolina Coach K, Pat Kilby. Uh, man, he, for those of you, again, who are watching, he is sitting inside the Hera High School gym, the Panther Dome, uh, where Mr. Brady Manick and a lot of his family played their high school basketball. And so for those of you listening, make sure to jump on over to YouTube at some point and, and check that out. Get to see a little bit of um, the Hera High School gym, and that'll be great. So today we are talking about Simeon Wiltshire, class of 2023, the first recruit in Carolina's class um, and so what I want to move to now, uh, we're going to talk more about his game and, and the roster, what it might look like for next season. But I want to ask first, Pack, when you look at Simeon Wilcher's game, who does he remind you of? And so give me, give me a UNC comp, somebody that people would remember, and give me an NBA comp. Okay. So I think Tar Heel Nation is going to love the UNC comp. Okay. Ooh, let's hear uh, it. I really do. In, in the in in the let me preface this a little bit okay i'm gonna build it up because i know i could catch some flack too if you just look at the player and not the person and what he's done since he's left the university of north carolina then i think you're gonna love the comp because he was a tremendous player for the university of north carolina i think i know where you're heading i think i know where you're heading (laughs) my comparison is rashad mccants yep (laughs) and and here's the thing with, with <laughs> I know I'm going to catch flack. All, all my, my guys and girls in the comments, y'all take it easy on me, okay? Um, no, light this man up. Yeah. <laughs> tell him, tell him. Just roast me. Uh, yes. But, but where I do want to draw a little bit of a comparison, and I mentioned it earlier, is not necessarily the tools of the game, which there is some comparisons there. Absolutely. But, but Simeon and Rashad have a, a similar mentality. And if you remember when Rashad was playing at North Carolina, he had some spunk and he had some some grit to him, and he, which I loved. You know, I loved yeah. it at the time. Moxie. Can we say Moxie? Moxie. That's a good word for it. And <laughs> Simeon brings that. And yeah. so they do have some similar, you know, skill sets too. They both shoot it fairly well. They both 
guard multiple positions. They both rebound well for combo guards. And so I really think it's a good, strong comparison when you look at North Carolina players. I love it. Yeah, like you said, say what you will about what he's done (laughs) since. But my goodness, this dude was an absolute baller. And like, if we could have another Rashad, and I mean, think about the guys around Rashad. You had Sean May, let's call that Armando Baycott, although he probably, well, anyway, like just a lot of the similar makeup and and you love that. Yeah, I'm all in on that comp. Yes. Yep. Now, if you want to look at a different comp, are you good with that? Let's do it. Okay. So I have a, I've, I'm really excited about this comparison. I think this is like the perfect comparison for Simeon Wilcher. And that is SGA for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Ooh, Shay shy. Gildas, Alexander. Yes, yes awesome. man. He's he's like a jack of all trades. And now he's that at the NBA level. And I'm sure. not by any means saying Simeon's going to be that good. I hope he is because that would <laughs> be pretty awesome. cool. <laughs> yeah. But I do think that their games are really similar in the mm. way that they play. And so, yeah, if he turns out to be that good, we're – First of all, we're going to be putting another banner up in the Dean Dome. And uh, second of all, we're going to be super happy that we got a, another solid pro hill out there. Man, I, I love that. I think I, I loved watching him at Kentucky SGA. I thought he just, like you said, he did a lot of stuff for Coach Cal's team. It, it took him a little while to come along, but once he did, he was rolling. And so I wouldn't be surprised if the same is true for Wiltshire. However, uh, as we look at the at the backcourt and how it projects for 2023-24, something we notice is that he might not have... One, one of the nice things about a loaded roster like Carolina's, uh, it's kind of like Sam Howell going uh, you know, where, uh, to Washington. He doesn't have to jump in right away and, and be the guy. Uh, when we look at this backcourt, Pac, you've got... Pro- I mean... Probably R.J. Davis is back for his senior year, like we just said a minute ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless Seth Trimble just goes wacky his first year, this upcoming season, he'll be back. And so you could have uh, a starting backcourt <laughs> of R.J. Davis and Seth Trimble. I mean, that's insane. And then bring Simeon off the bench. What, what uh, you know, as, as you think about some of the young players that you work with who it's like, man, this guy is so talented, but it's it's so nice to bring him off the bench as a younger player. What, what can that do for a freshman to relieve some of that stress? Well, it, do, it does exactly what you just said. It relieves a whole lot of stress. It relieves a lot of pressure. And, you know, like we've talked about on here before, experience in college basketball wins. And so – um, you know, he's going to be coming in, playing with R.J. Davis, who will, will be a senior. And, and that's a likely thing. We don't know for sure, but he's likely going to be playing with R.J. And he's going to be playing with I just Trimble. spit water out of my mouth. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Pac, I'm a mess over here. Keep going. Hey, hey it happens. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I was just saying, you know, I think that, that R.J. And, and Seth Trimble are going to be able to, to basically provide him comfort because he's going to be able to play in a role – where he's going to be able to come off the bench and he's going to be able to provide that way as opposed to just being thrown in the fire, here we go. And that's what you want your freshmen to be able to do. And I think that's why we've had some success over the the last few years, you know, especially towards the tail end of Roy Williams' career, where we getting the the top five recruits in the nation? No, not always. But we were bringing in guys like Luke May and Justin Jackson and – they were great players, but they were there and they were learning and they were developing and then bam, they turned into what they were. That's right. That's and right. then, you know, Simeon's going to get that opportunity. He's going to yeah. be playing. And I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if 2023, 24 backcourt was the best in the country. I mean, that's yeah. RJ and Trimble and uh, even DeMarco Dunn, you know, he's Dude, been mentioned seriously. a lot yeah. in the comments. Yeah. A lot of, yeah. a lot of fans like him. I like him a lot. I think he's got yeah. great potential. Yeah. Uh, and that, and he's a prime example. He's just played his freshman year with pretty much no pressure at all. But he's developing, he's working every day, and he's going to turn into a great player for us. And so yeah. uh, I don't anticipate Wiltshire being quite the same. I think he's going to play a role automatically. But I think that it's going to be awesome for him to be able to develop and have that leadership around him. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Seth Trimble will have that this upcoming season with uh-huh. getting to watch what might be this year's best backcourt in the nation between absolutely. Love and Davis. And so, man, the, the Tar Heel backcourt is just rolling, and I love that. 
Um, something else I want to make sure we hit on, because we're going to end here in just a few minutes, but we talked uh, about the different places that, that um, Simeon picked Carolina over. Uh, we looked at Yukon and Syracuse and then Nebraska. Why on earth is Nebraska on that list? Yeah, so it was the the race for Simeon Wiltshire. I think North Carolina was the front runner far and away from the get-go. Uh, but UConn and Syracuse, like you mentioned, were hanging around. They're close to home. And then Nebraska gets in kind of on the tail end of Simeon's recruitment. And the reason for that is his brother transferred to Nebraska. And so this past year was his brother's first year at Nebraska. Yeah. And, you know, Fred Hoiberg does a good job. He's, he does. He, you know, formerly at Iowa State, he's put players yeah. in the league. Yeah. Um, and so I'm sure that had some uh, – its own Absolutely. its own uh, enticements. But yeah. I think that, you know, at the end of the day, it's North Carolina and Hubert Davis. And so it's hard to pass that up. But, yeah, his brother transferred to Nebraska. And that definitely – you know, if, if I had to rank it, I would say North Carolina was one and Nebraska finished second. They kind of made yeah. that strong yeah. push there towards the end. Yeah. but. Yeah, can't discount that family uh, discount. <laughs> That's right. Uh, of, of players going to do that, and so, well, man, I tell you what, I the thing I love most when I watch his film, uh, Simeon Wiltshire, is the dude. I'm going to use the word devastating. To me, he looks like he's going to be absolutely devastating in transition. Like he gets out this this six four athletic dude who can finish over. Like he can pull up from three. He can dunk on you. He's his spin move is phenomenal. Like goodness gracious. And so I I, I just keep thinking about this McCants comparison, and and I think it's right. It's right on the nose. And so, boy, I'm I'm getting more excited about Wiltshire the more we're talking about him. Uh, you know, so, I said in the cold open, like, everybody's on Gigi Jackson, but don't sleep on Wiltshire. I think I might have been sleeping on Wiltshire. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting excited. So, man, that that's going to be great. And so um, I can honestly say – sorry, not, not to cut you no, off. Go I ahead. can honestly go ahead. say – in my in my opinion, I know this is going to sound kind of crazy because <laughs> Gigi Jackson is potentially the number one pick in the draft in 2024, but I'm kind of more excited about Wiltshire than I am Gigi because of what he can bring and yeah. the unicorn that he really is. He, we haven't had a player quite like him, so it's going to be cool to yeah. see. He's going to be our Swiss Army unicorn, and I can't wait to see. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's good. Well, folks, I hope you have enjoyed this conversation about Simeon Wiltshire. Speaking of Gigi Jackson, don't forget, that's who we're going to be talking about next week. Just kind of having the same type of conversation. Who he is, where he's from, what he brings to the table. So get uh, get ready and get locked in for that conversation. Uh, Pac, the Carolina Coach K, thank you for all your great insights from uh, there inside Hera High School in the Panther Dome. That's phenomenal. And so for both of us, this has been it for today's episode of Locked on Tar Heels. Please, if you would, go subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're uh, watching on YouTube, uh, we talked about all these comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts about Wiltshire and why you're excited for him. Make sure you go watch some highlights of him, check it out, and then hop in and and tell us what you love and and, uh, how you enjoyed this breakdown and and what we can do to help you learn about Carolina's new players even better than you already do. You can follow the show at Locked on Heels. Uh, Coach K, you can follow him at Coach underscore K. 23. Make sure you give him a follow. And while you're there, go ahead and find me as well at Isaac Shade, I S A A C S C H A D E. Well, uh, coming up on tomorrow's show, uh, Bet Online has dropped their odds for who's going to win the ACC in football next year. And uh, spoiler alert, Carolina ain't even in the top three. So we're going to have to unpack that a little bit, uh, see why that might be right, why it might be wrong. We'll figure it out. <laughs> but speaking of the ACC, why don't you go give Locked On ACC your second listen of the day. Get all that daily ACC news in 30 minutes or less every day. It's free and available everywhere you get podcasts. Well, hey, on behalf of Pac and myself, I just want I just did that over there. There we go. There you are. <laughs> uh, man, thank you so much for spending part of your Wednesday hanging out with the two of us talking about Carolina, talking about Simeon Welcher. He's going to be a great Tar Heel. And we want to remind you to remember that it's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. Until tomorrow, peace, deuces. (laughs) 